speaking of last night, this year, I mean, you look good in your suit. What did you make of the Hall of Fame event? I thought it was a fantastic night. I thought, you know, bringing the past with the present, getting our, our group there, selfishly from a coaching point of view, I, to have our players there to be able to listen and, and learn from the past was incredible. And, you know, the four, the four guys that got up and accepted the, um, you know, being inducted into the Hall of Fame, and as well as the four that uh, got up and interviewed them and sat on the couch and they, they talked openly and freely about, <clears throat> you know, what football was like and what they'd gone through. It was an incredible experience for our young group. Which ones, I mean, it's hard to separate, obviously, you know, an Auburn captain and, and you know, Biggs is your premiership captain as well. Was there sort of one in particular that you looked to and think, oh, they had as big an impact here as anyone? Look, uh, to be honest, on the night, I thought it was... The, the really interesting thing was how different they all were, the four of them. Um, and yet they played together, you know, throughout their careers and were so successful. But they all had their own um, thing, the ways they went about it. I thought it was it was really interesting, listening to all four of them. Um, I thought the way the way they all spoke was, um, you know, was really pleasing for our young guys to just sit back and listen, you know, to to what the game was, um, and the way they went about their footy. Um, not just their footy. Also, there was you know there was enough on the couch where they talked about life away from footy and some of the coach and player relationships. And you know, it was really interesting. I enjoyed the night as much as I'm sure our players did. And speaking of the players, I guess you announced the squad for Sunday. We we'll get cut down, obviously. Um, your approach for that one, I suppose, Luke Brown's back. Jacko Hately, I noticed as well. Just talked through a few of those selections, things that you might have yeah. struggled with. Uh, well, Brown will play. So back in that was. Um, you know, a, a bit of management with Brownie and um, we wanted to make sure that coming into the second half of the season he was able to perform at the level that we know he can. So it's been three weeks for him. So he'll, he'll come back in. Uh, Shoal will also play. He, I mean, he was our medical sub last week. And, and again, that was a, a management uh, decision with Shoaly, um, as well as a little bit of form. We, you know, Shoaly started the year so well, was the standout for us throughout that pre-season and whether the, the season just started to take its toll a little, he, he looked like he was grinding a little bit prior to, to having the rest. So trained really well yesterday as the whole group did. Sorry, what day? Yeah, Thursday, as the whole group did. Um, so it'll be, it'll be great to have those two back in. There's a bit of experience there from Brown. Um, and with that, Joshy Worrell will go back to the Sandfall. Um, and we felt, you know, off the back of the way he performed, he, he was solid. He held his own at the AFL level. The best part for him was, you know, sitting with him post-game and talking through the, you know, the, the areas that he now wants to go away and work on. You know, he's got a, a better understanding of what it takes to play at the level and the speed that is AFL. Um, it's quite a jump up from, from the Sanford level. So great experience for him. He'll get another opportunity at some point in, in time, but with Brown coming back in, um, you know, we'll, we'll get that experienced player down back. What about Seedsman? Oh, sorry. <coughs> so they're the only two. Hayley and Himmelberg just travel. Both, both emergencies at the moment, but yeah. without giving too much away, no, Jacko won't play at this point. Um, we've got a couple of things still in the mix. Uh, Cedo Creek sort of got a bit of a, a crook neck just in a tackle. We, we went pretty hard on Thursday. We had a, we had a great session out in the wet uh, Thursday, which... You know, might be an indication of where the game goes on the weekend with the roof open. So we were pleased to get that one in. Unfortunately, with that, you get a bit of bash and crash, and Cedo took a, a pretty good hit. So he's pulled up quite well. We're confident. We're 95% sure he'll, he'll be um, as good as gold. And uh, Brody Smith um, developed a bit of sort of tightness through his back. He's, he's great. He's in this morning, and he's uh, 100%, so he'll be right to go as well. On Jacko, um, I guess it's probably a positive sign that he's an emergency I mean, what does he have to do to get into the team? You know, he said, yeah. you know, the start of the season, Matt Crouch has a player, James, and Jackson Hayley plays only one or two. You know, most people would, would say, yeah, most people would say you're lying in the way. If you said that was, that was going to happen. Mm. Uh, yeah, and that's a fair call, but the guys who are in that midfield at the moment, which is where Jack goes, that's his weapon, he's in around the footy. You know, Laddie's playing some pretty good footy. Um, you know, Sloan coming back in there. Schoenberg's pinch hitting through our midfield and we really like what he brings to the team. And then Keyes is taking his game to another level. So uh, for Jacko, it's not necessarily about doing anything different. It's about consistency of performance 
um, and keep knocking on the door. And he's doing that. It's, you know, it's a couple of weeks in a row now that he's put some solid performances on at Sample level. Um, his messaging has just been, mate, just continue to consistently perform the way you are and the opportunity will come. And that's, that's how the footy gods work. It's great for our group to have that pressure from below. Um, and Jacko, you know, he's, he understands that. He'll go tomorrow against Westies and look to put another really solid performance out there. A lot of heat on the Blues this week externally. Um, they've copped it probably as much as anyone this season. Are you wary of a side when they're under the pump like that about you know, starting well and taking the crowd out of it or you know, wary of how hard they might come out early on? Yeah, we're, we're also looking at our starts. Unfortunately, we've third quarters for a while there and you know, we've, we've sort of gone through a lot of challenges this year and we work on something and something else pops up. But our, our last couple of weeks, we've started really slowly. And, um, you know, you point around Carlton, our opponents this week, are they're a very, very good side if, if they're allowed to play their style and they've, they've shown some really good footy this year. So, so we know how important the first five or ten minutes of this game you know, is going to be for both sides, for both sides. And, um, uh, you know, as a coach, when you see the opposition do, uh, get put under pressure the way they have this week, and we all have our moments like that, um, yeah, you are wary of, of how they'll come out. I know they'll respond. You know, they're, they're, they're a very good football side. So it's going to be great for our, for our young group to go you know, over to Melbourne again, another challenge where we, we go to an away venue, um, and we need to perform right from the outset. We haven't been able to do that the last couple of weeks. So our, our guys are really looking forward to it. And just on Smith and Seedsman, a, a final call sort of Sunday morning or um, tomorrow? It'll be more than likely tomorrow. Um, pretty sure that Brody's good to go. I just saw Brody um, in the change rooms. He's, he's feeling a lot better. Uh, Cedo's not in today, but he'll be in for the captain's run tomorrow and we'll make a decision on him tomorrow. But again, reasonably confident. With um, Shoulder going back, uh, coming back, what can you learn from, like, it's just a slight kick in the bum being dropped for one and then coming straight back in. It's not like a, we'll put you down for three or four weeks of good form to come back in. What are you learning in 14 days or 20 days or whatever it's been for you? It's, it's not really a kick in the bum. It's, it's, it's not all about form for Sholey. And sometimes when you look at form, we're looking at the way he's moving around the ground and and I talk about that that grind. And it can happen with, you know, especially with... Um, you know, a younger player, what you can see is that it's a long season um, and as I guess you get hardened to that and, and you talk about a player like Rory Sloan, he becomes hardened and, and can get through a 22 round season. Um, a lot of these guys that are first and second year in or third year in, it, it's quite challenging for them to work their way through a season. So there's a management part to it as well where um, we're not doing our, our guys any favours if we're just going to keep grinding them away week after week. You know, having the buy is going to you know, hopefully help our group. We felt um, you know, coming in that you know, it was such a good performance to fight back against the Saints. But at the start of that game, there was, we were just off the boil. We, we, we didn't quite have the game to the level we need you know, to, to compete. Um, you know, we, we're pleased to get the buy in when, when we have and to give them four days to go and mentally freshen up, but, but also physically. Um, you know, take that weekend off and we were rusty at the start of the week coming back in training wise which is great, it means they've had a good rest and, but yeah, they nailed it Thursday really nailed the session and we're back and, and ready to play again Sort of same token on the other side of the fence when Worrell comes in plays his, plays his first game has that big high and then has to go back because you've got yep. Brownie, come, Brownie coming back in, what does that do? I know a lot of coaches like to keep yeah. plays in for three or four to give them an extended run, what's your yeah, and I'm not, uh, and I, I don't necessarily sit either side of that. I've, I have had times where I've thought, you know, bring someone in, give them an opportunity for two or three weeks. In this situation, um, our communication with Josh has been really strong, um, and he's he's got a really good understanding of where his game's at at the moment. I think he'll be better for the opportunity, um, be it one game. He will have another opportunity at AFL level. Um, I think he goes back now, and I hope we see that tomorrow. He goes back with, with a, I guess, a slightly more confident game at SNFL level and goes to another level, goes to another level and shows, you know, and next time he's knocking on the door to come in, he's knocking a lot harder than what he was this time. But, um, yeah, it's a good point you make. You know, there are different cases for different individuals. I think Joshy will handle this one well. Do you think Daniel Talia will play any footy this year? Yeah, look, I hope, I hope so. Um, yeah, at the moment, it's quite tough for Tails. He's had a, a number of setbacks. Um, and like anyone who's in 
in that rehab space uh, or, or coming back from injury, it's, it's a really tough spot to be in. Um, we've got a number of guys in the same position at the moment. We've got Lynchy coming back from injury. We've got Matty Crouch trying to do the same thing. Um, uh, you know, Hingey as well. Now, Hingey probably we won't see him this year. But, uh, you know, for Daniel, it's, it's, been, it's been a tough ride. Um, he's sticking tight with the group. He's staying amongst the group and just having some small setbacks, which, which makes it hard for him. But I'm pretty confident, you know, we've, got, we've still got half a season to go, that he'll find that and get his body right. Um, and then he's a super important part. I mean, in, as part of this setback, we, we had him come out and join us for one of the main sessions uh, a month or so ago. And, um, I mean, he just destroyed it. You know, he played some, some really good footy in a training session. So we know what he brings when it, when it comes to on-field. Uh, we just hope we can see that before the season's out. And hopefully long-term, then, he's still going to stay on beyond this season. Yeah, and then that, that's then when the contract comes into... Uh, you know, the conversation around contract becomes... And there's a little bit of that at the moment. You know, we want to see and make sure that Daniel, first and foremost, knows he's still able to play at the level. Um, and it's similar. I mean, we've got Lynch in a, in a similar position. We've got Matty Crouch in a similar position. These guys, you know, there's a contract being discussed. and um, But at the same time, they're, at the moment, they're just keen and eager to get back playing footy with, with a, a young group that are... You know, that are competing and really enjoying their footy. They want to get back in amongst that, and they're really important parts to, to what we're doing. You know, the experience they bring on field is, is big for us. I don't think we've actually heard from you post the decision, but how relieved were you that Dad and Kay didn't get any weeks for the, the bumps against the Kilda? Um, oh, look, for, for, for DMAC as, as an individual, he's playing some really good footy for us. So from, from a coach point of view, it's great to have him remain in the side. He's, he's been really important for our group. Um, and I guess for the, for the game, it was an interesting one. I mean, it was obviously closely watched um, and being analysed by, by everyone in the industry. It was, a, it was a big moment as far as it could have changed the game if the decision went the other way. Uh, it'll be interesting where the game goes, you know, come the end of the year. Did you, did you suspect that it might even go, that it would go down that way? I mean, after the game, you kind of said that was a moment that changed everything for the team. I mean, did you have an idea that, you know, it might have got to the level that it did in the end? Where... I, no, to be honest, I did, at, at the time, in the game, I didn't think it would get to that level. But watching it back and speaking with, with Dave around, um, that, at not one point did he take his eyes off the ball. Um, so everything that he went through and spoke about when it came to the particular moment, um, he just spoke exactly how it played out. Um, and that's going to be the interesting one going forward. You know, players that, that attack the ball, um, you know, at some point there, there will be you know, accidents happen. Um, it'll be interesting where we go with that in the game. It's a really hard one because I understand what the AFL is doing and we, we definitely want to protect the player. We hate seeing a player get injured. Um, those incidents are rare, though, where it's such a 50-50 ball that two players go hard for. Um, so, yeah, so watch this space, I guess. with Tull and Crouchy. Did you say they're being discussed with those three guys? Is that right? Yes, at the moment there's the negotiations are happening. There's conversations around what that looks like. Some of those um, still sit around getting those guys back and playing footy. And so that's where the challenge comes in. That's where you know, these things may go on a little longer and we'll probably speak every week about you know, where's it at again? Where's it at again? And um, you know, the only answer I'll be able to give is, look, there's a, there's a little bit in the fact that we'd like to see these guys back playing football before um, you know, we come to an agreement with, with those players. Obviously, all super footballers and have done incredible things for the footy club, you know, some over, over a decade worth of um, you know, performance for this footy club on and off the field. Um, so you know, they're important conversations that we're having at the moment. So does their future here hinge on, I mean, specifically, we're talking probably about Talia and, and Tom Lynch. Um, does that hinge on whether they can get back and play, or is it a matter of understanding whether it's a sort of a one or a two year? Is that what you're trying to clarify? Uh, it, it's a mix. It's a mix of both. I'm, I, I'm not going to come out and say, look, no, they have to play football for them to be at this footy club going forward. That's not the case. But it is a, there is a factor that is factored into the conversation at this point. Uh, you know, if we talk about Tom Lynch at the moment, Tom's recovering really well. Um, he'll be looking to get back into training as soon as possible and get himself back onto the track and say, look, I'm, I'm ready to play uh, and I'll be an important part of what we're doing going forward. 
Um, Tails is in a similar boat and, and Maddie's in the same position. So it's, I, I understand the interest around it because, you know, these guys have, have been incredible servants to the footy club. Did Matt, Matt slightly different given his age? And... Slightly different position to the older two, yeah. 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 And that one, again, that's, that probably sits more on the negotiation side yeah. as yeah. far as when we talk term and... and Uh, quite strict on the protocols as far as what is involved with heading over and coming back. We're obviously flying day of game. Um, you know, masks are required right throughout the trip away. So even even as in the coach's box, I believe we're wearing the masks. We'll go through all those protocols tomorrow with our players when we, we go through our captain's run. Um, as far as I'm aware, it's COVID test dependent when we, we do come back into the state. And there's still a, there's still a couple of... Um, exemptions we're looking at for a, a number of players as far as when we come back if anyone had been over to uh, to Sydney during that break so um, there's a fair bit still to go through with that but as I've said to you guys right through the flexibility we've got to show when it comes to playing football is exactly what we do every week um, we'd love to have got over there the day before but it's not the case on this one and we'll be ready to play no matter what Yeah, I, I think, I mean, everyone's going to find themselves in, in that position at some point, aren't we? That's the nature of the industry. Uh, I don't like to deal in hypotheticals, so I don't particularly want to think about it from, from that point of view. But, yeah, I mean, we're, we're a reasonably tight-knit coaching group when you talk about, well, the entire coaching group, footy departments, but, but head coaches especially. Um, we do talk a fair bit, but um, not so much this week. We've, we've got Tiggy this week, and we know they'll come out breathing fire at the start of this game, so we'll take that challenge first. Is it a strain though for you as a, as a football coach, try, try, solely trying to drive your team to win, but knowing that it could have big consequences for someone else in a different club? No, the focus that I've got at the moment is, is what we're doing, and it will be every week. That's the way we go about it. We, we head down and we're working on how do we get better, sort of medium, longer term as well. So it's not all about that particular weekend. Yeah. Well, good guys. Just one more on Luke Brown coming back into the side. Yesterday, Tom Duda talked about the level of confidence he gives the group being back there. How important is he to your setup and having him healthy long term? Yeah, well, Tommy's, Tommy's spot on. Well, Tommy would know he's, he's playing alongside him. Um, at the moment, we're, we are a very inexperienced group down back. Um, we love that. We love the fact that we're, we're pretty raw back there. And sometimes we find that, you know, we, we can leak scores at times and we can make errors, and that's part of the learning process. Brownie adds that element of experience back there. Um, he's that sort of balanced head that in... in in times when we need him, he can step up and he can lead that group. Um, and I'm sure the way Tommy would speak about it, Tommy Duda, as a leader, it's nice to have that experience alongside you. So, yeah, he's super important. He also plays, um, you know, that important role on the really dangerous small forward for the opposition. Um, yeah, so when you talk about a, a Carlton, you talk about an Eddie Betts style of player that, um, you know, to have an experienced player also doing a really important job or an important role is, is someone that uh, we value highly. Just get, your, just get your view on something James Riley said during the week that um, players were sort of, they used the word panic in terms of you know, being able to handle opposition pressure and you know, in reference to your ball use and the way you go forward. Do you feel like there has been a sense of panic, to use James's word, in terms of you know, how you guys have handled opposition pressure? Yeah, it's, it's, I don't, I'm not sure it's the exact word. I'm not sure that panic's the exact word. Um, it's probably more a composure issue or, or a lack of composure at, at, a, at a really key moment. And the best sides in the competition bring, bring the pressure. Um, you know, you play against a Richmond, and we saw that this year, it, it's four quarters of pressure. So we, we showed some great signs in that game where we were composed and we moved the ball well even when the pressure was, was at its highest. Um, I don't think our, our guys panic, but the area we're working on at the mm. moment is our ability to hold that composure for four quarters. Um, if we do make a mistake, making one mistake, not turning it into three, 
Um, and, and often that is your challenge when you have a young group and we're, we're young down back and that's where the pressure often comes more than not, it's in your back 50. Um, yeah, our ability to, to make a mistake and still not um, take any damage on, when I say damage I mean like goals against, that's the part we're working on at the moment. Um, you know, our, our scores against are, are too high at this point in time. We, we can bring those back by 10 or 15 points a game. All of a sudden we sit now in, in where you need to as far as being competitive and fighting it out for finals footy. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, 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 boy. Thank you.